So back in 2016, uh, Greater East Midtown was performing well as an office district in terms of its cachet, uh, the rents, there was low vacancy rates. But the city had identified several long-term challenges that could actually hinder East Midtown from being uh, one of the region's largest job centers and a premier and attractive business district in the world. And so the city of New York developed a framework for a massive 78 block rezoning that had two major goals in mind. Uh, the first goal was to preserve, protect, and even strengthen East Midtown as a premier central business district. And they would do that by seeding the area with new, modern, sustainable office buildings. And the second goal was really to upgrade the public realm. So here we are, it's six years later, and you guys both have worked in this area. And I have questions for both of you. Um, you know, how has the city made progress on these two goals I just mentioned? It's actually pretty remarkable how quickly some of the owners in the East Midtown District responded to the rezoning. And I think it's a testament to the city in, in really having gotten, gotten it right. And very quickly, we were starting to talk to J.P. Morgan Chase about their building at 270 Park Avenue. Uh, and their desire to take the building down and build a new world headquarters for themselves. And so there was 270 Park, 343 Madison, the MTA, Boston Properties Project. And then the third one is 175 Park, where the redevelopment of the Grand Hyatt Hotel, uh, which is attached to Grand Central right at the corner of 42nd and Lexington. And we were lucky enough to get to work with all three of those owners um, on their projects and thinking about what that would look like, not only about the building itself, but conceiving the transit improvements, conceiving new public realm improvements, new public open space. In terms of the 20 year vision, the plan was really to make East Midtown cleaner, greener, just more uh, livable and friendlier so that we're able to attract uh, commuters who was just commuting into work to stay longer and spend more time. On the transit side, uh, they might be, you'll be seeing wider uh, stairways, uh, new escalators, new elevators, making stations ADA accessible, um, also new subway entrances potentially, especially for developments that are close to subway stops. Uh, on the safety side, New York City DOT recognizes that with the influx of pedestrians in the area, with everything that's happening in East Midtown, especially with al already happening and which is projected in the next 20 years, uh, safety is going to be a critical aspect. And so the New York City DOT is working on plans to improve safety in the area. And, and then on the open space side, we are going to continue to see more pedestrian plazas, just re-envisioning the pedestrian areas to make them more accessible, uh, to enable deliveries in the right way, to enable emergency responders. And the city has made a commitment of $15 million uh, already to actually go in and start making these improvements even before any of the buildings are completed. We're living this 20 year vision right now, which which is the best part. And uh, and we're starting to see those improvements come into fruition. Uh, it's post pandemic and there's this new norm of yeah. working. How do you think that will affect Greater East Midtown going forward? The, the work life and how often people are going into their offices, it's it has changed. But I think what hasn't changed is that this desire for high quality, class A office space, office space that has amenities that are bringing people in and people who want to spend time in the office, give people a reason to spend time in the office, is in some ways more valuable today than maybe it even was when the resulting was conceived. Even if people aren't coming in five days a week, even if people are coming in three or four days a week, it's still going to be a major place for office and commercial development. So what is your vision of what East Midtown looks like in 13 years? I would imagine it being a little bit more mixed use, but trying to find those pockets where residential neighborhoods or residential populations can thrive even among East Midtown, right? It's, I mean, great access to transit, not too far from nearby neighborhoods, which have community services like supermarkets and dry cleaners and all those great things. So I think trying to have a little bit more, seeing, seeing a neighborhood that's a little bit more flexible, has a little bit more mixed use character, but still is primarily a major office district. I think that's what I would, that's my best guess. 
So this is districts are transforming into these 24 seven communities where the city is hoping to keep those commuters late, later in the day after work so that uh, they can actually spend time in the area or even go home and come back with their families later in the night on weekends. And so there will be a lot of investment. We're already starting to see this and there'll be a lot of investment in, in that public realm aspect in order to make these world-class facilities. One of the biggest transformations that the city is envisioning is the creation of a world-class linear park along Park Avenue, which would be almost one mile long, extending from East 40th Street to 57th Street. This would really change the culture, the vision of East Midtown, just in terms of how it's viewed, not just by folks commuting into East Midtown, but just by the city and, and hopefully from in other parts of the world as well. You know, East Midtown is truly transformational. We've seen it happen already, and we can't wait to see what the future holds for this uh, central business district.